Yes, I do have one of those, those hats. I'm not really sure which one I'm going to speak with today. Probably more the author one, just for a change, really. Can we go? <coughs> okay, this is where I started out. Uh, choose your own style uh, adventure game books. Uh, this series is also the name of my company, Fabled Lands, and, and we picked it uh, for the company name because um, uh, it was pretty revolutionary for its time. Um, each book, as it came out, added uh, a territory to this fantasy world. So you could explore the world by going backwards and forwards between the books in any order, in a sort of um, open-ended sandbox uh, narrative, kind of precursor in text forms, things like Skyrim, I suppose, but obviously with much more freedom than you have in something like Skyrim. Um, the, uh, they look kind of old hat these days. You used to plan <coughs> on these big sheets of paper. I said, you still quite often use big sheets of paper. Um, but in their heyday, these were really a phenomenon. We'd do 100,000 units per title uh, and up. Um, so I think the takeaway is that books can do interactive stories. Um, I do agree that interactive stories and games as well, and that's very interesting, but books can do that. That's completely the wrong question to start with. So a lot of people <laughs> seem to begin with this. People think about it, I could put a Sudoku at the end of every chapter, and you have to solve the Sudoku in order to go through the story. So it's not addressing, so why would you want to do that? It's not, and, uh, the question is, why, uh, what engrosses you about stories? What makes us engage? Well, my favourite show, and I'm not at all interested, in the problem of crystal meth distribution in Albuquerque. <laughs> but I'm fascinated by the problem of Walter White. So it's a character that engages us with stories, that makes us connect and makes us you know, want to interact. If you put character and interactivity together, you've got relationship. And relationship is at the heart of Frankenstein, which I did with Profile Books last year. Um, you're Victor Frankenstein's confidant. Uh, he's asking for your advice, and sometimes he takes it, sometimes he doesn't. Often he'll take it and then blame you, because things go wrong. And you can change the kind of person he becomes because he's a very young man at the start of the story, so the things you're urging him to do are going to change how his character develops. Now, under the hood, I'm not using paper anymore, by the way, under the hood, this is still like a, a choose-your-own, but the device is crunching the numbers. It's not dice rolls anymore. More importantly, though, the variable, variables being tracked aren't things like combat ability or hit points. They're things like trust and guilt and pride and empathy. Oh, we did about 15,000, a bit more than 15,000 units last year on iPad, but we've now got EPUB 3 and Kindle Active content versions coming out. So uh, they're all ready to go, they're coming out quite soon. It'd be interesting to see how that does on all these different platforms um, internationally, because it's mostly in the UK where we did the, uh, did the iPad sales. Completely different from Frankenstein now. This is Dreams, a game I designed for Microsoft a few years back in the the brief was about something like The Sims that's nothing like The Sims. Well, from a narrative point of view, um, my problem with The Sims is twofold. First, you've got this relationship to the characters as if they're bugs in the jar. There's no empathy there. And secondly, you've got this clunky chemistry set interface between you and them, which is all tell not show. So strip all that away and just have the characters in the world, and I can tap them with the hand here on the shoulder and lead them to things or people I want them to interact with, just to see what happens. If I listen in on these two, they're having a conversation, all the characters are having a conversation all the time, actually, as well. They might be talking about this artwork I've led them to, and they might bond over it or fall out over it, depending on their mood and their personality. Or I can zoom right in, go one-on-one, -on -one, and she'll, uh, she'll look to me and she'll tell me her hopes and fears, which might be, my boyfriend's gone to the art gallery with that woman, what are you going to do about that? Well, I could help, or I could do the other thing, and whatever I do, she's going to remember. So if I mess up her life, she'll blame me and she'll, she'll shake her fist at me when I'm going down the street. Um, the interface is no longer between us and the characters. The interface is all in the world. An example of that, if they make friends or enemies, it generates this magic dust. You can see that in the background. There's two flavors of that. I can grab a pinch of it and sprinkle it to spice up the narrative. The red stuff, dark dust, that's Tim Burton dust. The blue bright dust, that's Walt Disney dust. <laughs> what about Walking Dead? Is that a good interactive story? It's fantastic interactive story, obviously. The choices are, are moral and they're complex and they've got consequences, but we're also impressed by the fuck-off 3D engine, aren't we? So <laughs> what are we going to do if uh, we're talking to a publisher who doesn't have $5 million to spend, but they do know that images are immersive? Well, I'm a comic book creator, so I'm going to say comics is one of the options. If you think comics is just the Beano or Superman, you've got to look at Mark Wade's talk at Tools of Change last month. That's fantastic on all the different styles and options that we've got with digital comics now. Nothing new, though, about using comics as a low-cost visual solution. Go back 10 years, and Remedy didn't have the money to do 3D <coughs> cutscenes for Max Payne, so they got the, the development team in, and they actually shot them in a photo novel, and they kind of comic-booked it up. The result is classy, 
and it really fits the material. And crucially, if I looked at another at a cut scene from 10 years ago that cost 10 or 100 times as much, it wouldn't be nearly as good. Other options, uh, long live action is a lot cheaper than you might think. This is particularly distressed live action like this. This is for an interactive Kafka thing we're working up. Or look at what uh, the other direction, simple and stylized. Look at what story mechanics are doing with 39 steps. Really nice, kind of Lottie Reiniger uh, silhouette shadow puppet thing. What kind of relationships might we do? All sorts. Just one example. You wouldn't be Bond, you're Bond's controller back at MI6, so you're telling him what to do. His 007 doesn't play well with others, so you have an adversarial relationship. Conflict is the motor of drama, and you have the conflict between you and the character. But really, I want to break the frame completely of what novels have been. What about a massively multiplayer, could be text-based, ongoing, serialised, interactive soap opera in which we're all interacting around the fringes of this story, and a lot of what we're doing may be feeding into the core narrative that we're all following. That's a bit quicker than <laughs> Oh, um, yeah. Publishers are going to say, we're not in the video games business and sounding a bit like video games. Well, that's no good anymore because these two land masses are now connected and there's going to be some evolution across and some DNA exchange, blurring of boundaries. Fable lands are here to take away the fear of that because we're, we're authors and we're game designers, but we also raise investment, typically becoming a partner uh, in order to reduce the risk. Just wanted to conclude with, I have to, this is our property we're very proud of. The Lord of all evil has been defeated by the forces of good expelled into our world exiled, in, imprisoned in the body of a 12-year-old boy with a lisp, from the Roald Dahl Award, NBC of Developing, a brilliant script by Ian Collins, so we're looking forward to that, uh, hopefully later in the year.